The Jumble Henge is a compact 16 input stereo spectral mixer with a unique patch based mixing interface. Both the spectral characteristics and the pan position are determined by the vertical and horizontal location of each jack on the panel, allowing for an intuitive and immediate mixing process. Each input includes its own carefully tuned resonant analog filter to emphasize and create space for every sound with the overall depth adjusted by the mix control. Additionally, there is a stereo external input for patching an extra sound source, mixer or effect return. The Jumble Henge is a space efficient solution for creating rich stereo mixes from a number of both mono and stereo sources. Let's take a closer look at the features. The top section includes the 14 primary inputs that are arranged in rows corresponding to high, high mid, low mid and low frequency responses. The mix amount crossfades between unfiltered and filtered inputs. Adjust this control to taste while creating a mix. Instead of conventional pan controls, patching a source towards the left, center or to the right will determine its panning at the output. Inputs are specifically placed to leave space for one another, with more centered lows and a wider spread towards the highs. The center left and right inputs of the top two rows are normaled, so that if the left input is patched with the right input open, the source will be centered. The external input follows this same scheme as well. In only a fraction of the space of a typical mixer, the jumble henge can mix down an entire system with a surprising amount of control over the sound. Before we begin patching, it's recommended that you listen with headphones or monitors to best perceive the stereo and spectral characteristics of each input. First of all, let's observe panning by patching a kick drum around the inputs. Currently, there is no filtering present. Notice the width of the panned inputs increase as we get closer to the top. When used alone, the centre left input acts like a mono in. Patching a dummy cable to the centre right jack will break the normaling and bring back its panning. Keep in mind, using the centre two inputs normaled for mono results in a slightly louder level since two inputs are being used. The top two centre inputs follow the same normaling arrangement as the row below. The top rows left and right jacks are the widest out of the 14 inputs. Now let's patch in some other drum sounds and give each a unique stereo placement. There are a variety of ways to pan sources, which can greatly alter the character of a mix.
Now let's listen to the filtering of each row with a mono mix of our drums, starting with the lows. Increasing the mix amount will bring in more of the filtered signal. In addition to the low pass filtering, notice a slight bass boost that occurs. As we move upward, the emphasis moves to the mids and then onto the highs, with each row claiming its own section of the frequency spectrum. The top row includes the maximum amount of high pass filtering. Leaving mix at 100%, let's quickly switch rows and compare them. Now we can re-separate our drum sounds and patch a mix which has both filtering and panning. Let's dial in the mix to better balance the filtering. Sounds can be swapped around to change how they are emphasised in the mix. Let's bring in a Kemi's castle using the external input. Patching only to the left, it acts as a mono input, with normaling between the two jacks just like above. If we take the second output of the castle to the right side, we will break the normal and monitor in stereo. Remember, the external input does not include filtering. Although the jumble henge does not include any CV modulation inputs, we can still create auto pan and modulated filter effects by pairing it with multiple VCAs. To start, let's patch up a typical auto pan using two VCAs from the Tangle Quartet. Two identically set outputs of the MCO are patched through the VCAs, with the outputs taken to the widest panned left and right inputs of the henge. Using the OAX2, we can patch a single LFO to control both VCAs inversely from one another.
In this case, we will split the pip slope to both inputs and turn on looping to create a triangle LFO. We can simply bring up the first channel's level to control the left side. However, for panning, we need inverse modulation going to the second channel. Turning the attenuverter to the left will invert the LFO and offsetting it up will allow it to take effect. We can now hear a basic auto panning effect, with our source sweeping evenly from left to right. Let's repurpose this patch by moving the inputs to be centered vertically. This will instead modulate the filtering in mono once we turn up the mix control. As before, let's combine the two dimensions of sound by reintroducing panning. Of course, we are only scratching the surface with two inputs, but this basic idea can be greatly expanded upon. Here we have applied the same modulation technique to a larger, more musical patch. In this setup, all four VCAs of the Tangle Quartet are being controlled by independent clock-synced envelopes from PAM, with a sequenced MCO duplicated by Beast Chalkboard to the VCA inputs. In this patch, the external input nicely accommodates our mono drum mix. Let's introduce some filtering with the mix control. Two more of the Henge inputs are fed by a pair of mum mates. Let's split the MCO's third out into them. Let's add a sequence to modulate the MCO's pulse width. We can also modulate the wave shape of the MCO. The patch really starts to come alive with some additional tombrel modulation. Now let's move the two envelopes controlling cutoff over to each mum mate's built-in VCA.
a similar manner to using VCAs, we can redistribute a sound source around the inputs of the jumble henge with sequential switching. Using the Boss Bow 2, we will take a chord sound from Sig Guts Deluxe and move it to eight different inputs, each of which will be panned and filtered differently. We can further emphasize the switching by mixing in the filters. Let's switch to a saw wave to make it more obvious. Like before, modulating the source adds even more character. Switching to square wave allows us to sweep the pulse width of the chord. We can use the same looping envelope that's clocking the switching to open the Sig Guts filter at each step. still use any of the remaining inputs of the henge for additional sources. Let's add a kick from Akemi's Taiko. creative possibilities for introducing motion to the jumble hinge. In addition to VCAs and switches, multi-channel filters, joystick controllers and effects modules are sure to pair nicely with it. Another interesting way to use the jumble hinge is for feedback patching. Here we will take the left output and boost it via the SBG then patch it back to the centre high input. Boosting the gain provides a healthy dose of distortion to our mix. Feedback becomes apparent as soon as we mix in some filtering. The loudest frequencies feeding back are dependent on input placement, amount of filtering and of course the sound source is patched. Turning the gain up we can clip our feedback even more to completely change the sound. Let's continue adding sources. Each one will affect the chaos differently.
For uncommon stereo effects, we can move the feedback to one side or even patch multiple paths. As always, experimenting can lead to exciting and new sounds. To conclude, let's combine many of the techniques shown throughout the video in this final patch. Again, we have set up a feedback path. However, this time we are returning from a stereo out of a chorus pedal. The result is a more pleasant feedback with stereo motion introduced by the chorus effect. Notice how sensitive the feedback is, closely following the dynamics of our input sources. To relate to our earlier patch techniques, let's run the feedback pass through two independent VCAs. Now we can modulate the amount of feedback with CV. In this case, we will use two random voltages from PAM. Thanks for watching this overview of the brand new Jumble Henge, a compact stereo and spectral mixer. As always, subscribe to stay up to date with new videos and product announcements. For more information about the Henge and the rest of the ALM product line, please visit busycircuits.com.